Thank you all for joining us. I say we'll let um, give it a few more minutes to have more people jump in on the call and then we'll get started.
All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I wanna thank you all for joining us. For those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person, my name is Ray Slowick and I am the Education Coordinator for the Lombard Historical Society. Um, I wanna thank you all so much for joining us here on this Saturday afternoon. Um, and we are excited to honor the uh, winners of the Sheldon Peck Art and Essay Contest. Again, thank you all so much for joining today. My name is Allison Costanzo and I'm the executive director for the Lombard Historical Society. And this program has going, been going on for a number of years and we were so excited to revamp this program this year. And uh, Ray uh, Slowak uh, has done a fantastic job working with the schools and the committee uh, to uh, revamp this program. So. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are recording today's program as well as Facebook living it. So in case anyone misses it, uh, you can share it with your friends um, or ask us to send you the recording as well. Absolutely. So I do want to start off today by thanking um, Bob Orzala and Leslie Sula for being judges for this contest. Um, as well as thank you to Bridget O'Brien who not only participated as a judge but was instrumental in helping us revamp um, the contest this year. And then a special thanks to Pat Poskisil for her guidance in this contest. Um, she has been a brainchild behind it for many years as well. Um, so definitely a special thank you to those four individuals. Uh, we could not have done this without them. So this contest really looks to connect students to Lombard and local history. You know, we see the influence of our past in our present. And so the goal was to use the critical thinking skills that we know our educators are instilling in students um, to create their entry. And we were thrilled to see the variety that we got this year. So Sheldon Peck was a radical abolitionist who believed in immediate equality for all. And we are um, you know, still aspiring to those lofty goals that him and his other contemporaries set for ourselves. And so the entries, um, really helped us get a glimpse into the world of Sheldon Peck and Lombard past. So we would like to recognize each of the students who entered. Um, for our elementary art category, we had Ashley Bernardino and Mahat, uh, Medhat Bahat uh, entered for that category. In our elementary essay category, we had Abigail Gronwald, Mahat Bahat as well, um, Ellie Sass, Riley Baker, and Shem Rodriguez. For our middle school entries, uh, school essay entries, we had Abby Schittaker, uh, Emily Harrison, Angelina Kotkamp, Carly Heiberger, Grace Samberini, Naomi Pulley, and Nathan Pulley. So we'd really like to thank all of the students who entered as well as all the educators who helped guide them through this process. So each student who entered will receive a certificate that we will be mailing out this uh, later this week. Um, as well as the three top places will receive a cash prize of $25 and the top prize will receive a family membership to the Lombard Historical Society. So we're really excited um, to you know, reward the hard work that we know all of these students have put in with their essays. So without further ado, um, I would like to uh, announce the winners of the elementary essay category. In third place, we had Mahad Bahat with her entry. And then in uh, as a tie for first place, we had Riley Baker and Abigail Gronwald. And so uh, we're going to take the opportunity to read aloud um, both Abigail's and Riley's entries. So first up, we will be reading Abigail's. And she titled her entry, My Journal Entry, Sheldon Peck, Who He Was and What He Believed In. I just sat down and had tea with Mr. Peck and I learned a lot about him. He is very interesting and was so kind to tell me about himself. Sheldon Peck was a famous folk artist who lived in Lombard but was born in Vermont. Apparently he taught himself how to paint. His artwork is now sold around the world. Sheldon Peck has such a distinct style so that if you see one of his pieces of art anywhere, you will recognize his work anywhere, even if you don't know the artist. His art is classified into three pieces, periods, excuse me, the Vermont period from 1820 to 1828, the New York period from 1828 to 1836, and the Illinois period from 1836 to 1869. Sheldon Peck was born in, 19, or in 1797 
and died in 1868 at the age of 70. He had 13 children and his parents were Jacob Peck, a blacksmith and sergeant in the Revolutionary War, and Elizabeth Peck. His ancestors helped found the New Haven Colony. He built a one and a half story house that still sits in Lombard today. You can even get a guided tour of it. However, he had a secret identity. Sheldon Peck was an underground railroad conductor, meaning he helped hide slaves that had run away. He believed strongly in abolitionism, non-slavery, and women's rights. His activism helped a lot of people who were former slaves be treated as equal human beings. In Sheldon Peck's time, life was very different. Even something we consider small today, like a 100 degree fever, could very well be a sign of something very serious that you could die from. Lombard was known as Babcock's Grove at the time. Sheldon Peck led a school in his own house and invited all the local children to come and learn there. He was also an assistant at the local Sunday school. Sheldon Peck sold some of his land to a railroad company. He grew crops and raised sheep so he could make clothes without supporting the South. He did not want the plantation owners to profit and afford more African-American slaves by his buying of their cotton. In conclusion, Sheldon Peck was an amazing man who risked so much to help escape slaves while being an artist, running a school in his house, and taking care of his 13 children. Peck's art brings happiness to so many people, as, an art, as art in general does. Sheldon Peck's art continues to bring happiness to so many people. Uh, his art is awesome, and it is so fun to learn about him. I say so thank you Abigail for that beautiful entry we can really see from that the uh, the care that you put into learning about Sheldon Peck um, and that you're right art does have a wonderful impact on the world around him all right the next essay I'll be reading is Riley Baker's and her journal uh, essay uh, about Sheldon Peck begins with the quote from Frederick Douglass where it is not light that is needed but fire it is not a gentle shower, but a thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. Sheldon Peck did many things in his life. Peck was a folk artist, husband, farmer, and father. Peck was an activist and fought for equality. Sheldon Peck was born August 27, 1797, and he died on March 16, 1868. Peck was married to Harriet Corey in 1825, and they were made mar remained married until his death. Peck fathered 13 children. Their names were John, Charles, George, Abigail, Watson, Martha, Patrick, Henry, Susan, Elizabeth, Abigail, Corey, Sanford, and Frank, and an unnamed child that died as an infant. From 1828 to 1836, while Sheldon Peck lived in New York, he became known for advocating ab for abolitionism, radical equality, temperance, public education, women's rights, and pacifism. The oldest house in Lombard is actually the Sheldon Peck homestead. The area was known as Babcock's Grove at the time that Peck built this homestead for his family in 1839. This home, now a living history center, was passed down from his children to their offspring. Sheldon Peck was a self-taught artist. No one instructed him, and he did not study under any established uh, painter. Oops, excuse me. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, did not study under any established uh, painter. Despite this, he became an accomplished artist and produced many paintings. Today, Peck is not only known for his folk artistry, but also for his activism. He stood for uh, equality, dignity, and respect for all people. Sheldon Peck put both meaning and personality into his art and into his actions. When Sheldon Peck and his family first moved to Babcock's Grove in 1837, he and Harriet lived with their then five, five children in a covered wagon on their property while building their house. It was there that he would become known for helping people on the run from slavery in the South. He was considered a radical abolitionist in the 1840s and 50s, and the family was known to have assisted freedom seekers in their journey north to Canada. The Pecks were participants in the Underground Railroad. In 1849, when the Galena and Chicago Union Railroad built a station in Babcock's Grove, 
It attracted commuters to move there. This ideally located railway suited the PEX and a good place to help others. Daily activism is when talk and action in everyday life is geared, towards, uh, geared toward bettering the lives of others. Activism is when people protest because they stand for something. It is doing that can change the world for better or maybe just a town. When Sheldon lived in Illinois, he was an agent for the abolitionist newspaper, The Western Citizen. When Peck was working for the newspaper, he was also a delegate for the Liberty Party. This was a political party whose main focus was on the abolition of slavery. At the same time, he was a member of the DuPage County Anti-Slavery Society. Through his activism, we can see that one person can change things for the good. Sheldon Peck understood this. He also knew that art could impact our lives in many ways. People can view it as a personal expression or as a creative way to make money. Art can make someone feel emotion, like how a moonlight picture can make someone feel calmer at ease or a picture of children playing and making someone happy. There's a big difference between the Lombard of Sheldon Pack's times and Lombard today. Transportation was by foot, horse, wagon, or train. Today, we travel in cars on blacktop roads directed by traffic signals. Back then, they didn't have real roads like we have today or cars. Today, we have roads made of blacktop, and uh, pants the uh, pants were lame to go in. Back then they didn't have um, larger office buildings and apartment complexes did not exist. When Sheldon Peck was alive, the men wore somber suits as was the fashion. But in today's world, women can also wear the pants and suits. Today, Lombard is a modern town with a rich history, thanks in large part to the works and works of Sheldon Peck. Thank you, Riley, for that beautiful entry. It was truly wonderful. And so next we are going to move to um, our elementary art category. So in second place, we had Ashley Bernardino. And in first place, we had uh, Mahat Bahat winning our art entry contest. And so I'm going to share my screen and share uh, Mahat's uh, beautiful artwork with all of us. There we go. She's on with us today. Her name's Maida. Just so Maida, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, yes, please do correct me if I'm mispronouncing anyone's name wrong. Um, but you should be seeing on your screens Maida's beautiful artwork. She has created a portrait of Sheldon Pack. Um, and you can, you can see that it does look very Pack-like as well. Um, he was known in his artworks for creating, using black clothing in some of the pieces we have um, at the Sheldon Pack today. He did not like to distinguish between the background and the artwork, so I'm very glad that uh, Mahad did that here today um, and definitely captured the high collar fashion that was very typical of the uh, mid 1800s. So thank you very much um, for your entry, and we can definitely see Sheldon's back influence on you today. Thank you. Um, all right, for our final category, we had our middle school essays. Uh, in a tie for third place, we had Naomi Pulley and Carly Heiberger. In second place, we had Angelina Kotkamp. And in first place, we had Grace Sambarine. And so I will now read Grace's essay aloud. Entitled From the Journal of Sheldon Peck, uh, August 23rd, 1856. Dear Journal, I am writing tonight by candlelight. It is a humid and hot August night. I am exhausted. It has been a really busy week as I continue to work here in Babcock's Grove, raising my sheep and tending to our farm. I haven't had much time for my art. Art is a passion and hobby for me. I have been so busy on the farm and my work as an abolitionist in DuPage County has become a bigger priority. As I write, I can hear the sound of the train in the distance. I am wondering if our guests tonight are somewhere on that train. I am not sure if they are arriving by train or wagon. My children are beginning to settle for the night as the darkness is upon us. I am waiting for a group of slaves to arrive at my homestead on the Underground Railroad. 
and praying for their safe arrival. My wife Harriet has made all the fo food and put out blankets and pillows. They will stay with us until it is safe to travel again. The nights on which we have slaves arrive on the Underground Railroad are always sleepless for me. I get so nervous that someone will find them here, but I also get so excited for their possible freedom as they travel towards Canada. Harriet and I fight for the rights and freedom of slaves. It is our mission. We believe strongly that all men and women were created equal and will continue to support efforts to free them, even if it means we risk our own lives. September 25th, 1856. Dear Journal, it is early in the morning. Harriet is busy running around cooking and getting food ready for our quarterly picnic today. The weather is starting to get a little cooler as I set up our tables and chairs in preparation for our temperance picnic at the Grove today. I continue to fight to eliminate liquor as it only causes poor behavior and health problems for those that consume it. I am looking forward to socializing and providing a fun alcohol-free gathering. Today, I will even display some of my most recent artwork as I have had more time this week to paint. I love sharing what I have created. I really enjoy the time I get to spend painting. It allows me to do something I love while creating something others can enjoy. Most of my time these last few months have been spent fighting for the rights of slaves and working to abolishing slavery. I try to imagine one day what it'll be like in Babcock's Grove when former slaves can be my free neighbors and own prop their own property. That will really be a great day. Thank you, Grace, for that essay entry. We can truly see, um, you know, that brings to life Sheldon Peck as a full rounded individual, um, often with history, the goals and the challenges to remind ourselves that these were living people who are part of our community um, and to know that they had weaknesses and faults and strengths just as we do today. All right. So uh, with that, I once again want to make sure we are congratulating our students um, who have entered and a special congratulations to our winners. Um, it was truly a pleasure to be able to read all of your entries and view all of your artwork. Um, and hopefully you will be able to come visit Sheldon Peck's homestead very soon. We would uh, have loved to have had all of you with us in person today. Um, hopefully next year, we'll all be able to be at the Sheldon Pack Homestead visiting there. Um, I say if anyone has questions, uh, I would love to be able to answer them. Otherwise, thank you folks so much for joining us. Thank you once again to um, our judges, our students, their families, and all of our educators who are joining us here today. Thank you for organizing. Absolutely, it is my I pleasure. just wanted to say thank you for the... Thank you for the opportunity. The kids had a good time. So. I'm so glad to hear that. I really am. And really, it's so great to have teachers who want to use secondary sources, uh, museums where, you know, the Lombard Historical Society is here for you teachers as a resource. We know that right now it's been incredibly challenging uh, with COVID and, and between the e-learning and hybrid and in-person, not in-person. You know, so we really do appreciate that you took this opportunity and used LHS as a resource and giving your, your students an opportunity to do something different and think outside the box. And we really welcome your feedback and help to make this program a continued success. success. Um, and getting your colleagues to be involved in this, you know, this experience as well. Uh, we're here for you, no matter what that looks like. You know, the PEC essay in our contest um, is just one of the things that we do at LHS. And um, if at any point you would love for us to do a program, our door is always open. And so um, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, we can only imagine the struggle you have all had this year, you know, uh, with COVID, you know, last year and going into this year. So. I know that you guys are doing a great job and to use us as a resource, we really do appreciate it. So thank you. All right, with that, I will close out today's program. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the wonderful weather that we are having this Saturday. Um, and thank you again so much for joining us. Like I said, we will have all the awards and certificates will be going in the mail uh, later this week. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Bye.